the suffering or the bad memories are, are as important as the good memories and the good experiences. If you sort of um, can imagine life as being 99% of the time quite linear and most of the time you're in a state of neither happiness nor sadness and then that 1% of the time you experience moments of very crystallized happiness or crystallized sadness or loneliness or depression and I believe all of those moments are very potent and, and it's, like, it's, like, um, it's like I said to you that for me it's mostly those moments, those crystalline moments of, of melancholy which are more inspirational to me and in a strange way they become quite beautiful in their own way music that is sad, melancholic, depressing is in a kind of perverse way more uplifting I find happy music extremely depressing uh, mostly. Mostly quite depressing. It's particularly if it's happy music that has no spirituality behind it. If it's just sort of mindless party music, it'd be quite depressing, you know. But largely speaking, I'd say I was the kind of person that responds more to melancholia and it makes me feel good. And I think the reason for this is that I think if you, if you respond strongly to that kind of art, it's because in a way it makes you feel like you're not alone. It makes us feel like we're not alone. So when we hear a very sad song, it makes us realize that we do share this kind of common human experience. We're all kind of bonded in sadness and melancholia and depression. Specifically, I like the, uh, the Victorian, sort of late 19th century tradition of taking pictures of the dead, almost as if you can preserve their soul somehow in the celluloid or whatever it's made of. But also the fact those pictures were so beautiful, they were actually pieces of art. It wasn't like some cheesy B-movie horror image. It was something actually quite beautiful and uh, peaceful. And in fact, when you looked at those pictures for the first time, you didn't realise the babies were dead at all, the children were dead. It just looked like they were kind of in, in repose or in sleep. But you knew something was not right. And then when you looked closer, you realised what it was. I don't know, it's one of the things that scares me about having children. Just the thought that you might lose them. Cope, and how do you cope with that? And do you ever recover from that? And isn't it easier not just to... not have kids at all, you know? Some of these are so human, aren't they? Like this one.